Hey, this is No Time to Game, and we're going to have a look at some overlooked NES RPGs. The NES is an interesting beast of a console. It has over a hundred RPGs released for it, surprisingly. And it, well, with that many titles, it means some slip away into the shadows covered by the giants that the NES has, such as Dragon Quest and Final Fantasies. So yeah, many titles get overlooked, and we're going to have a look at five that I feel deserve some time in the light. The only criteria being that they're an RPG and have an English version, whether that's official or fan-made. First up, we have Destiny of an Emperor. Uh, this is first on my list, and possibly the most well-known, since it got an NA release in 1990, and actually got some acclaim in the like by from reviewers and such but i think it did get overlooked due to its premise especially at the time as it follows liu bei and his friends from the romance of the three kingdoms era in china which i don't feel was as popular back then as it is say now especially with like dynasty warriors and such helping to push that popularity it sees us following liu bei's early years albeit with major alterations to fit to the game and such. Um, he faces the Yellow Turban Rebellion, becomes the governor of the Zhu province, and beyond. Gameplay-wise, it has a turn-based battle system, but one that's a little different to normal, as your HP actually represents the number of troops under your command. And this number affects things like how much damage you do, so the higher the number, the better. So the more damage you take, you start doing less damage. Like 150 characters you can recruit uh, usually by finding and besting them in combat, but some so story related. And upon recruiting them, they actually stop being an enemy in the random encounters. But beware, not all characters are built equal, as only certain characters can actually grow stronger. So by the end of the game, your party's probably going to be made up of those guys. Overall, it's a fun little romp through ancient China with an intriguing systems. Uh, systems that I'd like to use more in games, actually. It's but especially the troops as HP stuff is quite kind of interesting. Next up is the last game on this list that was actually released in the West. So not the last game released in the West, but just on this list. Um, and this is Ghost Lion. A game we got three years after its initial release in Japan. Um, so this is 1992 for us. And it's probably overlooked due to this as the SNES was a strong presence at this point. Ghost Lion's a cool little RPG. It's an early example of a female protagonist, actually. It follows, it follows Maria as uh, she goes to look for her parents who disappeared after a white lion attacked their village, and the parents went to find it. But early into the search, something strange happens. Um, Maria finds herself in an odd world, and thus a battle for survival and the truth begins. Gameplay-wise, Ghost Lion is reminiscent of the original Dragon Quests, um, as most of the time you're alone. But the twist is... Maria is able to summon spirits to aid her in battle. And also she doesn't level up in a traditional way. You have to find items and miracles to increase her stats. Uh, Ghost Lion is an interesting experience and shouldn't be overlooked by old school RPG fans. Over the years, I've noticed an interesting crossover between survival horror fans and RPG fans. And so it generally surprised me that there are not more horror RPGs out there. Sweet Home is actually an early example of this and is the precursor to the Resident Evil series. Sweet Home is actually based on a film of the same name. Um, it's about a group of documentary filmmakers entering a famous artist's mansion in order to find like several precious items that he left. But they're soon trapped due to the horrors that are within the old mansion. The gameplay is quite interesting as it's a mix between puzzle solving through exploration and interaction with stuff on the map and turn-based battles against the monstrosities within. You actually get to control several people as well, independently. And if a character dies in battle or because of a trap, they're actually permanently dead. Meaning the game actually has multiple endings depending on how many people survive. So yeah, it's quite a mix. That's um, worth it for horror and RPG fans, as it blends the two quite interestingly. And like I said, it's the inspiration for Resident Evil. So go grab that fan translation and have a go. 
Next up on our list is an early example of a sci-fi RPG, something we don't see that often. Obviously, most RPGs are very fantasy-based. Um, the Grand Point is an interesting futuristic RPG from Konami, of all people. Uh, the Grand Point sees us taking on the role of Gene, a researcher on a faraway space station, but due to an incident involving biohazards, Gene sets off to figure out what exactly is going on. Gameplay-wise, it's pretty standard for the time, with in-battles being like a front view a la Dragon Quest or Fantasy Star, Fantasy Star being the obvious comparison overall. But it does have like an auto battle feature, which is kind of cool as it helps blitz through those battles a bit quicker. You just click the button and watch it go. And it's random encounters, but unlike say Fantasy Star, which is almost like a um, first person dungeon crawler when you scoot through the dungeons, this is top down the entire time. And like I said, so as I've said, the obvious comparison to Fantasy Star but this is very much its own thing, story and gameplay wise. And it has a banging soundtrack. And this is coming from a person that doesn't usually care about soundtracks that much. So there you go. Play it if nothing else for the soundtrack. Uh, last on today's list, we have the most interesting name of all, Just Breed. <laughs> what a title. And it's an Enix Tactics RPG that is another late come to the NES's lifespan, but even late even in Japan, as it never actually saw a Western release. So to the fans, we go for a translation. We take on the role of a nameless hero whose girlfriend is the town's priestess, but it's not long before she's kidnapped by the minions of someone evil doing evil things, collecting the priestesses like Pokemon to summon some sort of evil thingy doopadad. Uh, just Breed's actually a tactics RPG, you know, a la Fire Emblem, Shining Force, etc. But it feels a bit closer to Shining Force than Fire Emblem. Uh, firstly, you get to explore towns in between battles, but it does have its own interesting twist on the genre in that you get squads of troops rather than individuals. So each squad is led by what you could consider a normal character kind of thing. But when they get to move, all the others members of their squad move with them. So it actually feels like you're moving an army because you have a lot of characters. Like each guy takes quite a few with them and you get to move them all. So it's very, like while it's like I said, it feels similar to Shining Force, it is very much its own thing. And definitely, definitely worth a look for tactics fans out there. It also really pushes the console due to coming out so late in the like time span of the, the NES and Famicom. It's one of the special chips in it, so it, it pushes the system a bit further. So yeah, there we have five overlooked RPGs on the NES. If there's any titles that you feel are overlooked and deserve some attention, chuck them in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe and all that jazz. See you again soon.